Hello viewers, I bring you greetings from New Covenant Church, Asokoro Parish. This morning we're going to be sharing on what I call receiving the life of your dream. And I want to encourage you to please join me on this very exciting journey into the Word of God this morning. I have no doubt that God has a message for you. God has, there's a word for you that's going to be a blessing, a tremendous blessing to your life. Through the Word of God, we know that His thoughts towards us are wonderful. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, Let's read together if you have your Bible with you. But if you don't, I, 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 read from, I read from here. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now, what do we find in that word? We find that God has God's plan for us is to have, one is to have peace, goodness, or blessings. That's what it talks about. It says not of evil, goodness, and then to give you an expected end. Now, what is that expected end? That expected end is your expectation from the Lord is a dream in your heart. That expected end is the desire of your heart. How do I know that? Go with me to the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24. There, this, the Bible makes it clear that whatsoever thing you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it, and you shall have it. Whatsoever thing you desire. I'm sure you've heard this scripture before. In fact, when I was growing up, this was one of the most powerful scriptures that guided me as a young Christian more than three decades ago when I started this journey with the Lord. He says, Whatsoever thing you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received it and you shall have it. Now, the important element there is believing that you have received it and then being clear in your heart about that expected end, being definite. A lot of people pray, they fast, but somehow it appears that they are not receiving what they are expecting. It might be because there is nothing definite that they have placed before the Lord. There is nothing specific that they have placed before the Lord. That's why the Bible says, expected end. There must be a clarity to that expectation. It needs to be clear. It needs to be clear. In fact, you need to write it down. You need to put it on paper. So that when you want to forget, or when you feel discouraged, you can go back to, your, to, to what you have written down. That's why the Bible says, you should make the vision plain on, the, on, on, on a paper, on tablets. And then, we go back to that Jeremiah chapter number 20, uh, 29 verse 12. He said, then, after the expected end has been defined, that which is not defined, you cannot find. So, once the expected end has been defined, you have conceived it. It has entered into your heart. And as you pray about it, as you meditate on it, it goes into your subconscious. It becomes part of you. You, may, you, you, you have not seen it physically, but you have seen it with the eyes of your faith. You have seen it with the eyes of your faith. Then, Jeremiah 29 verse 12 says, Then you shall call upon me, and you shall, you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And then you shall seek me, and find me when you search for me with all your heart. 
combining Old Testament and New Testament to deliver to you the Word of God this morning. He says, you ask, you seek, you find. That's in the New Testament. But the book of Jeremiah says, when you seek me and find me, when you shall seek me and find me, when you shall seek me with all your heart. In other words, asking, seeking, uh, um, asking, knocking, seeking. Asking, seeking, knocking. Together, constitute what we call searching for God with all of your heart. Now, The plan of God for you and I, the plan of God for his children, is to make us reign as kings and priests. So it is, not, it is no big deal for you to believe God for something big. It is, not, it, is no, it is not too ambitious because God is big. God can do everything. One man of God said he was praying to God to give him a house. And God opened his eyes and says, I'm going to give you a city. In fact, I'm going to give you cities. In other words, God expects his children to have big dreams, to expect and believe and receive from him big things. So his plan is to make us reign as kings and priests. Let's check. Let's confirm that from Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Has made us. He's not just going to make us. God has made us. That's his plan for us. For us to be able to enjoy this plan, we must receive it by faith. He says, whatsoever thing you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. Scriptures cannot be broken. I took this word, this rema, from the word of God years ago, several decades ago, and everything I received have been manifesting one after the other. And, I, and you see, God is no respecter of persons. God only respects his words. If you make up your mind today that this is what I want, God, this is what I, I'm believing you for, and this is what your word says about it, I tell you, it's established. It is done. And you're going to receive that expected end in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you to extend your faith. The fact that you have been staying at home gives us an opportunity to really dig deep into the things of God, to really find out what does God have for me in his word, and then to receive great things, great and mighty things from the hand of the Lord. So his plan for us is to make us reign as kings and priests. Let's confirm that also from 1 Peter. We go to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. And we'll read verse 9. If you have your Bible, you can join me. We're looking at 1 Peter chapter 2. And I read from here. Very popular scripture. It says, but you, you, talking about you, talking about me, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. We have been chosen. It's not that he's going to choose us. We have been chosen. You have been chosen. Put your hand on your chest and agree with me and agree with the word of God that you have been chosen. Chosen for what? To be a royal priesthood. A combination of royalty and priesthood that talks about that confirms what is said in Revelation God has made us kings and priests unto his unto, unto himself unto his God kings and priests in his kingdom that's what he has made us and then what then happened as we begin to seek him as we begin to seek him that word that we have received that promise that expected end that we, have that we have received in the realm of faith will begin to manifest. God is a God of principle. 
as, I, as I've always said, God is a God of process. He's a God of principle. When you follow the process and apply the principle, you will produce the promise. Following the process, applying the principles, we produce the promise. The scriptures cannot be broken. He said, not a jot or an iota of my word will return to me void. That's why God is very, God is happy. God is, is happy when his children believe him for big things. When they, when, when they trust him for big things. That's why I'm encouraging you. It is true, you, have done, you may have achieved some great things. Or maybe you have not achieved much. But whatever you have achieved, as far as God is concerned, it's small, it is small. God can do much more. All you need to do is to believe and receive. Now, what does it mean to reign as king and priests? He's talking about authority. He's talking about influence. He's talking about territory. He's talking about dominion. He's talking about fruitfulness. He's talking about peace. He says the blessings of God, they make rich without adding sorrow. He's talking about sound health. He says even in your old age, you will still be fruitful. He said, your children will surround your table. You know, and that your sons will be like olive trees planted, and that your daughters will be like polished stones. You know, wonderful promises. Now, what happens after you receive these promises? I, 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 as I said, it's already birth. You have conceived of the blessings. Is already inside of you. You are carrying it. And waiting for the appropriate time to birth it. You're waiting for manifestation of those promises. Whatever you are waiting for, whatever you are expecting, that expected end, God has the power to bring it to, to be. He says, shall a woman conceive and not be given the power to bring forth? God will release upon you the power to birth those wonderful things that you have received of him, that you have conceived of him through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, but you step out there into the world. What do you find? Obstacles, disappointments, delays. In fact, sometimes your mind veers off what you have received. You are thinking of your inadequacies. I have nobody to help me. My background is not, I'm from a poor background, all of that, all kinds of negative thoughts. We call of, all of this weakness of the flesh. Some are even thinking of, of their sins. They are thinking of their limited resources. I give an illustration. A good example I like to cite all, always is a, a, the life of um, Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was highly educated, but he was a confused man at a point in his life. He was going about his life in his own strength. He was applying human efforts, you know, depending on his own strong will and personal qualities, his brilliance, all of that human wisdom, all of that self-efforts, trusting in the arm of the flesh, all of that led him to do terrible things, including persecuting believers. For example, one of the things he did, one of the most terrible things he did was that he supervised the death of the first Christian martyr. That's Stephen. For the Bible tells us in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 7, verse 57 to 58, that he was the one who held the clothes, the coats of those who killed Stephen. That's Apostle Paul. However, somewhere along the line, Somewhere along the line, on his way to Damascus, to go and do what? To go and persecute Christians. God found him. God, he encountered God and gave his life to Christ. That was the beginning of the turnaround in his life. So, even if you are not born again today, God has a plan for you. But for you to be able to access that plan of God, you need to give your life to Christ. You have struggled all by yourself. For too long, even for those of you already saved, who have given your life to Christ, you need to begin to subject yourself to the process of 
the word of God. In other words, consciously going to God in prayers, receiving that dream, that expected end, receiving it, and then walking the process. Uh, what does that mean? How did Apostle Paul do it? How did he do it? The first thing was that he accepted God's solution to sin. He accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. You know, I want people who are listening to me to know that your problem is not sin. Your problem is your failure to receive God's solution to sin. And who is God's solution to sin? It's Jesus Christ. He knows that man on his own couldn't make it. That's why he sent his only begotten son to die in our stead on the cross, to take our place on the cross, to give us access to God's best riches. That's why Jesus Christ came. So the first thing is to accept God's solution to sin. God's solution. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then, what do you do? You put the past behind you. As Apostle Paul did. You put the past behind you. I don't know what challenges of life you have faced up to now. I don't know what confusion of mind has gone around with you. I don't know what evil habits you have had. I don't know what terrible things you have done. But the Lord is asking me to tell you this morning that as you put the past behind you and you turn around, you make a U-turn like Apostle Paul, determined to get that expected end, determined to receive the best that God has in stock for you, determined to reign in life as a priest and a king, I tell you, you are going to accomplish it. The power of God and the grace of God will cause that to become the reality of your life. You know this time in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, this is how Apostle Paul puts it. He says in Philippians 3, 13 to 14, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. With God, things can always get better and better and better for you. That's why it says that the path of the just is like a, a shining light. It gets brighter and brighter and brighter. That's why Apostle Paul says, I forget the things which are behind, and I reach forth to the things which are before. What are those things which are before? The expected end that you have conceived. The expected end that you, you have, that, that you have received in the place of prayer. Those things, those things you are trusting God for, that you have defined, maybe a ministry, maybe a career, maybe a family, maybe good, good health, whatever, whatsoever you are believing for. The Bible says whatsoever. Only God uses such words as whatsoever because he has solution to everything. He has the answer to everything. Man is limited, but God is unlimited. Now, you forget the things which are behind, and then you reach forth to those things which are before, and then you press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You press. In other words, you put in efforts. But mind you, you are not depending upon your efforts. You are putting on the conviction that you have received by faith from God. And then you are, you are now pressing forth, working hard, working out the process by doing the word of God. Because God is bound by his word. He says, when you seek me, when you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. When you find God, when you receive that which you have believed from God, after you have received it, then you begin to walk on your faith. That's why Apostle Paul talks about the mark for the, of the prize. That shows clarity of goal. There's a mark. In other words, your faith is, will be hanging in the air if there's nothing specific you are believing God for. 
you need to define. That's why somebody said you can write your ticket to, to get. You can write your, your ticket. God permits you to write your own ticket. You can define your future by faith under God. Faith in God, you can define. Lord, this is what I'm trusting you for. Of course, that's what I want. But let your will, I surrender to you, your perfect will. So you ensure that what you're trusting God for is in line with the will of God for your life. Once that is settled, it's going to come to pass. Praise the Lord. It says, the mark for the prize, that shows clarity of goal. Then there's need for single-mindedness. A lot of people are double-minded. Are double-minded. They, they want to do 10 things at the same time. In fact, they are multiple-minded, not just double-minded. They see people doing some things, they are attracted, they want to go and do it. That may not be your expected then. That, that may not be God's plan or purpose for your life. Till your own ground. Stay in the vision that God has given you. Single-mindedly. Like an athlete. Who wants to, who wants to become a fast, the fastest runner in the world? He begins to practice to be an athlete. He does not practice to be a boxer. He does not practice to be a footballer. He's single-minded. My own vision when I started about, about 30 years ago was to be, a, to, make, to, to be a professor of law and then to preach the gospel of Christ as a professor. Single-minded, single-mindedness with focus. When you focus on that expected end, under God, you will accomplish it. Several years from now, you will be giving testimonies. You will be telling your own story and other people will be telling your own story as well. I don't, I don't know what you have achieved in life, but whatever you have achieved, I want you to know that the best is yet to come. God has not, is not finished with you yet. And let me tell you something. Age is no barrier to accomplishing the things that God wants to do in your life. Either you are young or you are old, all you need to do is to be able to know by faith what you are believing for. Receive it by faith. And then apply the process and the principles of the word of God you will accomplish it in the name of Jesus Christ. So, single-mindedness, very important. Focus. And then, not letting the achievements of the past or the success of the past prevent you from aspiring onto higher things. The fact that you are alive tells me that God has even greater things for you to accomplish in the future. There are greater things God wants to do through you. It is not time to wash your net yet. It's not time yet. Somebody said, and I love it, that the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. Things you have done before, you can improve on them. Books you have written, you can revise them. Skills you have learned, you can learn them afresh. In fact, after this COVID-19 experience, the world is going to be a different place. We're going to need new skills. We're going to, we're going to need new knowledge. New ways of thinking, new ways of new system uh, means of hygiene, new businesses we develop. You go around now, what people are selling masks, masks, um, you know, all kinds of things. Some guys are developing ventilators. In fact, it's like the whole world has gone back to ground zero. Everybody is starting afresh. So, even as a country, we have an opportunity to start afresh. As an individual, you have an opportunity to to to, to, to start to start afresh. We can relearn that which we have learned before. We can master new things. So, what am I talking about? So, we should not allow the achievement of the past to tie us down. We must not allow the past to prevent us from entering into the glorious destiny that God has planned for us. If you are tied down to your past, you will miss the plan of God for your future. So, determine as you are hearing the word of God, to go forward every day. That's what I call daily fruitfulness. Practice daily fruitfulness. Grow spiritually, socially, on a daily basis. And pay attention to all the dimensions of life. These are the processes that will produce that expected end. First and foremost, the height of life. That is the relationship with God. Pay attention to it. Make sure the communication with heaven is not disturbed. It's, it's clear and free and focused. That's the height of life. Then the depth of life. That is your, your rootedness in the word of God. 
How much root do you have in the Word of God? Are you people, are you among people who don't even have time to study the Word of God in details? The Word of God that will work for you is the Word of God that has, that has entered into your heart. Not the one that remains just merely in the level of your brain. No, no, no. It needs to go to the level of your heart. It needs to become part of you. That is the difference between the, the, the logos and the rema. The rema is the word of God that you have taken and appropriated for your own personal use. So, depth of life. Then the breadth of life. Talking about your relationship with other human beings. How do you relate? Sis, you cannot say you love God if you don't love your neighbor. So when you are wondering, sometimes when it appears as if some of your prayers are not answered, why don't you try loving your neighbors in a new way? Why don't you try forgiving others so that God will forgive you your own sins? And then the length of life, health, that's talking about your health. You know, quit bad habits that can cut short your life. For example, overeating, use of or abuse of drug, smoking, drinking, you know, things that will reduce your, the quality of your life. So to enjoy a life of quality as a king and a priest, you need to grow in knowledge. That's what Apostle Paul kept on saying, that I may know him. That I may know him. And that's what the Bible means by saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, that I may know him. And finally, you must be an instrument in the hand of God to make happen for others what you want God to make happen for you. In other words, you are not self-centered. You are not just seeking all of these benefits only for your own enjoyment. You are seeking these benefits so that you can be a blessing to the world around you. And, I, and as you conclude this message, I want to assure you that as you put these things into practice, your life will definitely experience the, a, a, a positive change. You'll be able to live as a king and as a priest on earth, which is the plan of God for your life. Friends, I want to thank you for listening to me this morning. I have no doubt that the Lord has ministered to you. And I pray, I pray that the word of God that you have heard this morning will mix with faith in your heart. And that word will produce stupendous outcomes in your health, in your life, in your career, in every area in which you are expecting something from the Lord. God bless you. It's been a wonderful time. See you again next time. Thank you.